Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So on this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking the motor off of the Great Dane because it has a broken rod. Taking the motor off of this Gravely Pro 200, which is a 16 horsepower, and popping it onto the Great Dane. This one still works. This one's got a broken rod of some sort. And I'm not going to record the whole thing because I just don't have enough daylight. Okay, I just took the safety plate off the rear. And I don't see any holes in the block, but it looks like there is a lot of oil coming from, I think this is cylinder number two. Let's see if I can get in there. So yeah, I would say this is our problematic side. It's been leaking oil for quite some time. I'm gonna take this over here and pressure wash all of this grease off. It's just a lot nicer to work on when they're not covered in grease. All right, I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. Unless I pull out a bigger pressure washer. It's a little better. You can see definitely has some rust issues. You can kind of see some of the holes. They didn't have any holes drilled, so the water just pulled up and caused the deck to rust. So that's probably the weak link on these mowers, so you might want to check that. So you can see the 16 has a rat's nest in it, and the 18 also has a rat's nest in it. It's really subtle differences on these one being the flywheel where the 16 has the cast iron flywheel the 18 has a uh, just like a plastic shroud on it now I'm taking these apart because the 16 needs head gaskets it's like every Vanguard I have leaks oil at the head gaskets so I don't know if that's a flaw or it's just like where maybe the head bolts stretch. But I'm going to be ordering new head bolts and I'm going to go ahead and get head gaskets for the 16. Okay, now that I have the engine off the Great Dane, I've brought it into the shop. I've got it on the stand. We're going to go ahead and take this apart. And uh, we're going to see if we can't figure out what exactly is wrong with it. Now I know I'm using just the uh, standard chrome sockets on an impact, you're not supposed to do that, but I've got a lifetime warranty, they're cobalt. So that sucker had some wear on it. Next we're gonna take the intake off. going to take a little rubber mallet and pop it. Looks like we got a zip tie here. We're going to just take it off. Okay, just set it out of the way. I've got a good hunch that this motor is probably trashed, so I'm not taking a lot of care on keeping everything organized like I normally would. This one's been into before. It's got, can't really see it, but it has RTV. Okay, the valves seem to work. these lifters loose. So 
also just for future note looks like we have an aluminum one on the exhaust side and we have a steel one on the intake same thing aluminum on exhaust and a steel one on the uh, intake next thing we're going to take off looks like the governor assembly needs to come off and just for a reference the exhaust bolts have a hex or a star and the governor ones don't a little bit longer in length there'll be four of those take this off so that one's going to be on until i get this governor arm off this is the next thing we're going to take off is the governor arm loosen that one up all right I'm actually gonna leave the governor arm up here because I do not want to lose those springs Got a little bit more debris all right at this time I'm gonna stop the camera and I think I'm gonna pull you guys a little closer we're gonna proceed to take off the heads so another 12 millimeter bolt So, they've replaced these before, but they actually had pine needles in it. So these cells have been replaced. I'm gonna kind of offset a little bit so you can see a little better, I guess. Okay. Let's see if the link's different on these. guess we'll just go ahead and get right to is this cylinder frozen or is it open okay get a little amount of rust in there okay is this a good cylinder all right this one's still good head gasket looks like it was in good shape all right so this must be the side that has all the problems Check it out. Okay, cylinders all the way up. Check the difference in the size. Okay, so the size of the uh, bolts are the same. It doesn't really matter. Those will probably get replaced. Um, they tend to stretch. Head H1 is the one uh, giving us the problem. So let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. Spinning her over. We've definitely got a dead cylinder. So we can pop it. So it's not seized. All right, looks like we're gonna flip her on her belly. We are now going to proceed to take off the sump. 12 millimeter on all these. Oh, and it's not 12. All right, got a 13 millimeter. Just makes it so much easier to have an impact gun. Okay, here we go. Big reveal. What's going on? Didn't mean to do that. Almost looks like the bolt sheared off. It's a clean break right there. I wonder if the arm just let go. Let's see what else we got here. So we got all the parts. Yeah, I wonder if they over torqued this at the factory and it just popped it. Okay. So that one held, but it, the other one broke, and then this one let go. Cam shows little or no sign of wear on it. That's excellent. All the push rods seem good.
crank doesn't appear to have any scars on it, so I think I could probably just, uh, it's normally a lot easier to do this with the crank out. All right, I guess the next thing I need to do is we need to go ahead and let's get the crank out of it. So that looks like a pretty big socket, maybe 15 sixteenths, maybe one inch. Okay, let's see if we can pop it loose. There she goes. Got two 12 more millimeters in here. Let's see if I can lean it up and show you guys. All right, I went ahead and got a seven millimeter and an eight millimeter. Seven is the winner. I'm just gonna loosen them up with the socket wrench and I'm gonna take them out with the Phillips head. This one of those models that looks like it has a diode. dirt that was in there i mean it was rubbing on the magnets like past the magnets with dust looks like we had a critter living in here top seal was leaking also on this let's see if i can get this stator off Ugh. all right found a 10 millimeter I will need this for the other motor. I think this is a 10 millimeter. Now I'm just checking these bolts. I, I wanted to see, they are a little loose. We're gonna take the connecting rods loose. It's kind of like doing half the work with only uh, one connecting rod. Oh, I guess we can take that off. Normally these have some kind of, uh, like a bend tab so this doesn't happen. I don't understand why this one doesn't. Okay, what I'm gonna do is just gonna turn this crank. Push this piston up. Okay, I'm gonna pull the crank out. So the important parts are smooth. For the most part, that's pretty smooth. It's smooth enough. All right, crank looks good. Okay, let's knock out this piston. scarring ooh so when it grenaded it did get into that it pushed it into the side of the crank a little bit okay, let me look at the crank one more time it's still smooth I think the cranks okay okay now let's see what this one looks like So this one, you can see where it's broken the piston. Looks like maybe they had water in the fuel or something. All the rings are frozen on this one. So you can see this one's nice, all the rings float. On this one, they don't. Everything seized up, so I wonder if water's been down the cylinder. They tried to start it, and it uh, just boogered it up. Let's look at the bore real quick. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it still has the crosshatch on that cylinder. Still has the crosshatch on this one. I don't see any scrapes, so this is definitely a candidate for. Uh, New piston rods, one new piston, and a ring set, and I think I can get this 18 going again. 
anyway that's going to conclude this video thank you guys for watching be sure to like and subscribe